we are at a decisive moment for the future of the European Union. Today's vote will be one important step in setting the course for the next five years in Europe. We all know that the challenges ahead of us are huge, and this places an enormous responsibility on our shoulders. We see right now that climate change already today affects us all. This summer shows it once again. Parts of Europe are withering in the heat. In other regions, entire livelihoods are being destroyed in the floods. Not continuing on the path towards climate neutrality right now, taking detours or even pausing would be the completely wrong thing to do. Colleagues, we cannot backtrack on the Green Deal. We need to go the next step. We need a climate adaptation law to make us more resilient and, for example, protect our critical water supplies. The Green Deal is about nothing less than our survival on this planet, and we should treat it with the needed seriousness. Colleagues, the green transition is the greatest challenge of our generation. In order to maintain our prosperity, we need to massively invest in greening our industries. Those who say that it's either about tackling climate change or about fostering our competitiveness are simply wrong. We need to do both at the same time and with it create millions of green jobs in the European Union. We have seen thousands of farmers that are taking to the streets because they can no longer make a living from their hard work. These farmers need to get a decent revenue. At the same time, we need to make EU agriculture more resilient to climate change and biodiversity loss. We need to strengthen animal welfare in the European Union, and we have to finally ensure that small farmers get their fair share of EU agricultural subsidies. Farmers deserve better than the current rules in the common agricultural policy. Colleagues, let us reform the cap in this mandate. This European Union needs to be a social union. The effects of the pandemic, our long-standing energy dependency on fossil fuels, in the, the brutal war in Ukraine, the cost of living crisis hit many people very hard. We cannot leave them alone. Everybody has to be able to make a, a decent living. We need to provide dignity for all European citizens because it is right, but also because history has shown that rising social inequality is a threat to our societies and to democracy itself. So for the working people in Europe, we have to send a very clear message today. Exploitation can never be a business model in Europe. Decent income and fair working conditions are our duty to the working people on this beautiful continent. There is one fundament, colleagues, of this union that cannot be negotiated on, our common European values. Too many governments in the European Union right now are attacking this foundation of rule of law and fundamental rights. And they are even using EU funds to strengthen their authoritarian grip on society. And honestly, the last Commission has too often waited for far too long to do something about this. This has to change. Every single EU citizen, no matter in which member states, deserves their rights for rule of law and fundamental rights to be defended. This has to be a Commission, colleagues, for everyone in Europe. Because whether you are black, Muslim, Jewish, Roma, queer or disabled. Europe is your home and this union is built on exactly this promise of equality. <laughs> Colleagues, we live in a changing world. European foreign defense and security policy has been far too fragmented in the last decades ever too often. It weakens us all, especially with Putin's servant right now at the Council Presidency. We have to make sure that we are changing this and build a strong, united, ready to act European Union by ending unanimity votes in Council. Let's take away the veto right so that we are all stronger together. Colleagues, we have a shared responsibility ahead of us. 
we see that there is a lot at stake. And if you ask me, is Ursula von der Leyen a green candidate to be Commission President, or is this a green program that she has provided us with the political guidelines? I can tell you no. We have negotiated hard. We have made compromise over these past weeks. And for me, what is crucial is that the majority that holds today is a majority of pro-European democratic groups in this House, because we need to keep the far right from getting into power from having impact on the policy making in this European Union. We know that we are stronger when we work together as pro-Europeans. Let us keep this promise to our citizens and constructively work together and build a better European future for all. Thank you very much. Thank you.